We got some very, very interesting news here. The Las Vegas Raiders were assigned a defensive end that has some insane upside, at least in my opinion. Uh, David Abuka Agoa, a defensive end from Nigeria, has been added to the Raiders roster. Uh, what's interesting is his size, 6'6", 245. He ran a 4'48", 40 yard dash. That's crazy. 4'48", for that size is not normal. But uh, apparently this guy has some insane athleticism and this guy has some, some upside. And for the Raiders, you're given this player who... Uh, comes from the International pa uh, Player Pathway Program. And what's interesting about that is he won't count against the roster spot for the Raiders. So technically, we can keep one extra guy. He'll count against or he'll have the practice squad exemption because he's part of that program. So the Raiders could technically have, you know, 53 plus, you know, the seven or 10 man practice squad players. And then they'll have like an eighth or 11th player, right? Whatever the, the rule will be for this season. Um... So the Raiders get this monster defensive lineman, right? And it's interesting because technically we didn't sign him and technically he was assigned to the Raiders. And the unfortunate part for this guy is people are saying he had the upside to maybe even get drafted had he been able to get down to the IMG Academy. Uh, unfortunately for him, and I should just back up here, uh, the players that come out of this program, you know, they'll work out at like a London combine, they'll work out in their own country, just depending on whichever country they're from, Nigeria, some come from like England, um, they'll work out in their own uh, combines, and then they'll come together for a, um, for like an NFL combine where they'll, you know, like, hey, you know, we're gonna take these 16 guys that we think could make the NFL, we're gonna send them to the IMG Academy in Florida, and that's when NFL teams come. And this guy was invited. And unfortunately for him, he had some visa issues. Uh, he wasn't able to make it there. But some people do st say that based off of his size, his speed, uh, his athletic ability. He may have been able to be drafted maybe in the seventh round. Or someone would have taken this guy as a UDFA and picked him up. Uh, obviously, he was assigned to a team because no one really saw him. Right? No one really knew what this guy had. But... Uh, according to some of the reports I'm reading, teams wanted this guy, right? There were teams that wanted this guy to be assigned to them. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Obviously, he's never played football, right? He's, he really doesn't have that experience. So as he gets to the Raiders and training camp comes, he's, you know, he's going to have to learn, right? But I think defensive end is a pretty easy position to learn to like, you know, where, where you can start growing fairly quickly. You know, you get there and you get taught some run fits, some pass rush you know here you hit him with the bull rush hit him with the swim move just super simple stuff and you can let this guy start to develop and learn the game uh, obviously he won't count against the roster spot this year so he'll have the entire year to develop and then going into next year obviously he'll still be at a disadvantage because he's only one year in he'll have a legit shot to make the raiders roster next year or even just stay on the practice squad obviously he'll count against the practice squad next year but uh, to me, I think this is absolutely perfect for the Raiders. Uh, you're getting yourself, uh, you know, you're getting yourself an opportunity to, you know, get a guy that could be one of the next top tier players, potentially, right? Um, Jordan Mulata, obviously an absolute superstar player, came from this program. Uh, the Eagles took this guy, I believe, in the seventh round, and he ended, he ended up being one of the best, right? Jakob Johnson ended up being very, very solid for the Raiders, uh, but even before for the Patriots, he's a very solid fullback. Um, and then even uh, Effa Abada, who I think he's with the Eagles now, or he may be with the Washington Commanders. You know, he has like eight, nine sacks over his career. He's been in the league just for like three or four years as well. So the guy has some upside. And the thing with this program is it hasn't been functioning for the last 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, right? So we don't have a whole lot of players that have actually been successful. This is like a five, six year old program. I believe it started in 2017, 2016, around then. Um, and I think Jordan Mulata is one of the first guys that kind of came out too. But uh, I think the longer this program operates, I think more likely we'll get more players that kind of come in and, and are successful NFL players. And David Abuka Agoa for the Raiders could be that next guy, right? So we'll see what ends up happening. You know, at this point where, where the Raiders kind of are, uh, I like the upside of pretty much any UDFA or player that's kind of assigned. You know, I think at this point, you really want to just find traits and see if you can build on traits. Right. An example for Ogoa is the fact that he's 6'6", 245 and ran a 448 and had a 37 inch vertical. Those that's something you can build on, right? Because this guy 
you know, if you're comparing him to another defensive lineman who's 6'1", 220, uh, you know, ran a 4'8", you know, the comparison's way different. One is much more athletic. Now, I'm not saying the guy that's smaller can't be better, right? Hand-to-hand -hand technique goes a long way in the NFL, but my point is, is at least this guy has some traits to build on, right? And you're getting these other UDFAs where you're not 100% sure who's going to stick, who's not. You know, a lot of guys, one of the things I've noticed in this draft cycle is a lot of the guys that got drafted are guys from the top tier schools. Uh, a lot of guys from like NC State and, you know, guys from like these FCS uh, schools like South Dakota State. A lot of these guys ended up going undrafted and they signed undrafted contracts. And a lot of the guys drafted were guys from the Alabamas and the Georgias, uh, you know, and the USC's and the top tier schools. So... It's interesting because now the Raiders are getting this extra guy as well. And we'll see what ends up happening, right? I think he definitely has some upside. Um, just to kind of wrap it up, the Raiders got an interesting defensive line kind of going, you know, with uh, some of the traits and stuff. Uh, on one end, you got Chandler Jones and Max Crosby, who I project to be the Raiders starters. And I think Tyree Wilson will rotate in with Chandler Jones. I think one of the things that will happen a lot this year is we'll put Tyree Wilson in at the 4-I or, or 3-Tech. Maybe you you know bump him out just a little bit and like that long 3 where he's in a, a real one-on-one -on -one situation with the guard. Uh, you'll put Chandler Jones on the outside of him. Uh, I think Malcolm Koontz will rotate in just a little bit, although I do think Koontz will be fighting for a roster spot this year. Uh, he's really going to have to prove himself. I do think the Raiders have made a massive mistake with Koontz. I, I think he has upside, and I think we just haven't really used him correctly. Um, and then we even brought in Jordan Willis out of San Francisco, and, and he's he's a guy that kind of has some upside as well. He's a guy that I kind of like as well, right? So we'll see what ends up happening, man. I think the Raiders' defense line is definitely coming together. I think the Raiders have taken the approach of, you know, let's get guys that can develop into much better players than just take guys that are kind of better today. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, one of my favorite defense events coming out this year was Will McDonald. Uh, I believe he went like six, seven picks after Tyree Wilson, right? I think McDonald was, what, pick 14, 15? I think Will McDonald is much better today than Tyree Wilson is, right? I think Will McDonald, you know, you look at the senior bowl tape of what Will McDonald did, he crushed it, he dominated, he dominated the every single offensive lineman there um and i think his college tape backs that up obviously with this college tape is he was being used incorrectly right and iowa state ran a lot of three down defensive linemen but also with will mcdonald is he's not very big doesn't have the wingspan his weight isn't that high he's not going to ever develop into a 6'6 275 pound monster the way tyree wilson is right from a physical standpoint tyree wilson way out that performs will mcdonald his ceiling is much much higher right tyree wilson is a uh, to me not a developmental player because he's already going to be a good player but um you know he's a guy that does have to develop a little bit and it seems like the raiders would rather take that guy over the will mcdonald type of player and i'm not saying the raiders are going to take will mcdonald at seven i'm just making a point to me it seems like the raiders will rather take a guy with a little bit more upside if he isn't there today to hopefully develop a guy right and i kind of see that with some of our udfas i kind of see that with some of our draft picks you know byron young i think uh, needs to develop but if he develops you know if he, he has strength right the guy's strong as hell the guy's powerful um, if he develops a little bit, I think he has massive upside. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Raiders kept Divine Diablo around, right? Diablo is like 6'3", fast, strong, explosive. To me, it seems like the Raiders want to, you know, develop these guys a little bit. So I think David Abuka Goa is at home, and this is the best case scenario for him to come to the Raiders, come to a team like Dave Ziegler, who, you know, I think his mindset is development right so we'll see what ends up happening let me know what you guys think in the comments below thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you guys next time with another video